Hello, and welcome back to another Carbonite U video. In this video, we're going to cover the topic of setting up your outputs. So let's get into it and jump into Dashboard. All right, now that we're in Dashboard, let's go ahead, come on down to our navigation menu. Let's jump over to the configuration screen and let's go to the outputs tab. Right away in the outputs tab, you can see that I've got one audio breakout module set up, so we'll be able to cover that part. And we're currently running in the sample rate converter mode. I am definitely locked to only having output conversion on output five and output six. I have sample rate conversion on all of my physical inputs, which is great. Any frame sync means all the audio is going to be automatically converted. It also means that I am running an IO plus. First things we'll notice is there are three columns. What is our source? In the source column, this is how we select what is going to be sent out the output connector. And as you'll see, outputs one, two, three, and four are locked. These are locked to the IO multi viewers one and two and the vid proc or the primary system multi viewers one and two. You'll also notice that you can define audio with your system multi viewers. So if you want to be able to use a multi viewer to send the audio out of the system into an external device, it's still available there as well. First thing we do is we click on the source button and now we have the ability to send any physical input. So any of our physical inputs, those actual SDI spigots, and this is kind of like a direct out. That way it can't be changed unless somebody comes in and changes the output assignment. We can also assign any internal switcher bus. In this case, really, let's call it switcher output buses. Black color background media stores. Those are internal sources, same as the clip player. But then out of the MEs, we have a program, a preview, a clean feed, as well as we even have the media wipe and media wipe alpha channels. Each of the mini MEs, you can also send out the program, the preview, and a key combined output. So if I want to use this as a layering on top within a single keyer inside of another ME or mini ME, I can use the key combiner and pair it with the ME program to give me essentially a layered output. You can also assign an aux bus. Now an aux bus is just a virtual bus. We can assign these to internal elements as well. They can be used on key buses. They can be used on background buses. They can be used as sources inside of a multi viewer. This allows you an abstraction layer for assigning sources within memories, macros, uh, and to other devices. Additionally, any ME bus can be followed. So now, unlike the outputs or the compositions that come out of the Emmys, this allows you to have outputs that are tracking the input bus to the Emmy. So any key video, key alpha, any program or preset bus, those buses can actually be tracked by other buses. This can even be done on an aux bus. So if you go to an aux bus and you want to follow whatever's on the preset bus, you can do that. You also have your mini ME follows because again, it would just be too many pages with three MEs and the four mini MEs. And again, it's all of the buses and the canvases. So this is our multi-screen and canvas outputs. Uh, we renamed it because we've improved the feature and it's kind of generation two. And we'll be talking about canvases in a later video. So now that you've picked the video source, your next column is conversion. I could assign a converter to it and what output format I want it to convert to. Currently, because we're operating at 1080p 5994, I can output at 720p 5994, 1080i 5994, 1080p 5994. Yes, you can turn it on and it will add a frame of delay. You can also down convert to the SD version of the frequency you're operating in. If I was doing 1080p 50, I'm going to have the option of 576i. 
Finally, you have the audio mix column, and this was added in version four. And this allows me to set up when I have the audio mixer option that I want to output. Essentially, every single output has its own embedder. Each embedder can have its own custom assignment of any of the mixes. I can have any combination on those pairs. So this would be SDI pair one, two, which stereo audio mixer am I sending out? All 16 channels or all eight pairs can be populated with any combination of the program audio, 12 aux mixers, the monitor, and you can even silence tracks. Each output can have its own separate custom definition. So that's not one assignment copied across. That is a custom definition per output. The other two modes that you have is pass through. Pass through is there and that way all 16 channels of the source are going to be passed through. When I assign an ME uh, program, mini ME, ME1, ME2 or an aux bus, that source is going to be derived from the background bus. Now, obviously an aux bus is a single bus, but in our MEs, because we have key layers, there is no mixing going on. Pass through is going to pass through the 16 channels that's coming from the source that is currently selected on the background bus. Standard was a methodology to maintain compatibility with our graphite early generation setup. Uh, and this was just a standard configuration which would send main, aux 1, aux 2, aux 3, aux 4, aux 5, aux 6, and monitor out. And this is just kind of the standard mixes. Because I have an ABU connected, the output of the ABU connects to the input of the switcher. And that comes from input 24 and then output 14 goes back to the ABU where it carries through the data for setting all the outputs and what they're supposed to be as well as embedded audio. We have to assign them to specific spigots so that depending on what you assign to it, we under the hood take care of all that for you. When we look at the getting started guide on the website, ABUs tie into the system. You see the output 14 traveling two frame in and two frame out traveling to input 24. Very important to wire these according to which audio breakout module or breakout unit is connected. When I add a second unit, I have to wire to input 23 and output 13. So it's very important to understand that you're not losing these inputs and outputs. What we're doing is we're bringing the video into the audio breakout module or audio breakout unit and maintaining the first four channels of audio for that source and then embedding on top of channels five and up the eight analog inputs and the two AES inputs from the associated audio breakout unit. Additionally, in this case, output 14 is going to be sending the audio in its associations as it needs it and telling the audio breakout unit what it is supposed to do with those outputs. Is it supposed to output just the left channel, just the right channel, or is it supposed to do a mono sum? And this mono summing is taking place on the hardware. The way to think about that is output one is going to be pair one and two coming from the switcher. Essentially a mono summing device per output. There will be data that comes along as well, ancillary data. It tells the ABU, you need to either send only the left channel, only the right channel, only the sum of both channels out this analog audio channel. So analog one is essentially whatever is coming down 
pair 1 and 2. Analog 2 will be pair 3, 4. 3 is 5, 6. 4 is 7, 8. And 5 is 9 and 10. The AES output is a stereo pair. That will be on 11 and 12. And then silence will be packed into the rest of the channels. The SDI output that loops out of it will carry whatever video you've assigned and it'll have all that audio embedded on it in that same order. And again, in stereo pairs, even though the analog output is mono because we're doing the summing on the analog devices chips that we have inside of the unit. Now that we understand why this is not selectable, let's move on to our next column. On the back of the Ultra, there are two AES connectors. And those two AES connectors are essentially Wico connectors and they come in the installation kit next to the LTC connector. These will provide you a stereo pair coming out of the switcher. On these outputs, we can select either of our media store channels that have audio, media one and two, three and four do not have audio. We can select any of the Emmy's media wipe channels. So this is kind of treating it like an aux bus and whichever media store channel I'm using for a media wipe on that Emmy is what will automatically get routed out this AES connector for me. You can also send the internal clip player audio out. So this is the H.264 decoder. Now you can also assign any of the 13 stereo mixes and the monitor output directly out those AES connectors as well. When we look at an audio breakout module, if I have more than one unit, we'll automatically populate those columns. So right away, analog one, I get to pick any of my 13 stereo mixes or the monitor output, as well as pick is it supposed to be the left channel, mono, or the right channel? And this selection is telling the ancillary data how to flag the information for analog one to ensure that it switches the device to either put out the left channel, the right channel, or mono sum them accordingly and send it out that connector. Finally, your AES is obviously going to be pared down since it's already a stereo connector, you're going to have both the left and right from any of the mixes that you assign. That's it. That's how you set up all of your outputs, how you define them, how you set up the analog audio mixer outputs from the audio breakout module, how you assign custom embedders to every single one of your physical outputs, and how you can now link audio from the stereo mixers into your physical AES outputs on the back of the Ultra. As always, I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. And if there's any questions you have, comments, or of course, requests, please send those to switchers at rossvideo.com and we'll try to get a video up regarding that as soon as we can. As always, see you next time.